A comfortable temperature is a vital component of any tent event. When tent heating is required, LB White Premier Heaters are the number one choice. We'd like to show you now how to properly set up and operate the LB White Premier Heaters and the propane fuel source for a typical tent application. Meet Chris. Chris is in charge of setting up a reception at his workplace, which is going to be under a tent in the lawn in front of the building. He's planning for chilly autumn weather and will need a heating system for the duration. Meet Jim. Jim is knowledgeable on the proper usage and setup of Premier Heaters and can help Chris with the entire process. Chris contacts Jim who advises that he use the LB White Tent Heater Sizing Guide. First, the tent size is selected based on the expected number of tent occupants and activities planned. And once the tent is ordered, Chris consults the Heater Sizing Guide to determine the heating requirement. He sets the slider bar at 1,200 square feet, which is the closest number on the chart just above the actual size of the tent. Then he chooses a heat rise figure of 40 degrees, which is the difference between the desired temperature of 70 and a possible low of 30 degrees during the event. Rounding up to the nearest whole number, the chart shows he should use two Premier 80s or one Premier 170 to adequately heat this tent. The largest Premier unit, the 350, can be used when a larger tent is heated. And very large tents often require multiple units of any of the three sizes to supply and evenly distribute enough heat. For this event, Chris has decided that he will use a single Premier 170. He will also need to choose between four heat distribution methods. The Premier 170 can be set up outside the tent with a diffuser directly attached to the heater. The diffuser is simply tucked under the tent sidewall. Secondly, the 170 can be used with a 12-foot duct and a diffuser attached to the end, again tucked under the tent sidewall. Perfect when setting up the heater next to the tent is not an option. Thirdly, the Premier 170 heat distribution system allows for use of perforated duct inside the tent, still with the heater outside. And fourthly, the heater can be set up inside the tent with no ducting or air diffusion needed. On the day before the event, the rental company delivers and sets up the tent on the lawn next to the building. Chris and Jim meet at the tent site to set up the heating system. Jim, now that I've got the tent set up, where should I start to properly heat it? Well, Chris, there are some important steps that are required. Let's start with the propane fuel supply first. Jim explains that the first step is to check with the local code governing the use of propane gas. Requirements may vary from state to state and city to city, but safe installation and usage is the common goal. A 100-pound LP cylinder is the minimum size required to run the Premier heaters. The gas company delivers two 100-pound cylinders, which will be manifolded together to ensure an adequate fuel supply throughout the event. The propane gas containers must be placed on a stable, flat, level surface and secured to prevent tip-over. Make sure the gas containers are placed at least five feet from the nearest tent wall structure. Additionally, railing, fencing, or other suitable materials must be used to prevent unauthorized access to the containers and to protect from vehicular traffic. Jim and Chris are now ready to set up the heater. All right, Chris, the next step is that you need to decide if you want the heaters inside the tent or outside. I think I'd prefer to have them outside the tent to save space for other furnishings and activities. Because of the nature of the event and the number of people attending, Chris has determined that putting the heater inside would just take up too much space. In another situation, positioning the heater inside may be acceptable or even preferable, as the heaters are certified for use either inside or outside the tent. But when used outside, an approved duct system must be used. They have decided to use the unit diffuser attached to the heater itself. The unit diffuser is installed on the heater, then the heater and diffuser are located at the chosen spot along the side wall. The diffuser is tucked under the tent side wall with the wall fitting neatly into the designated slot on the diffuser, which holds it in place, separated from direct contact with the heated duct. Another acceptable installation would be to instead use a 12-foot distribution duct between the heater and an end diffuser, which is tucked under the tent wall just like the unit diffuser. This allows the heater itself to be up to 12 feet away from the tent. Jim, this is great, but is there a way I can evenly distribute the heat along the side walls of the tent? You bet there is, Chris. You can use the Premier 170 air distribution kit. For his next event, Chris realizes he will need to spread heat evenly along the floor. Jim shows him how the distribution kit accomplishes that. 
The kit uses the same 12-foot distribution duct from the heater, which is attached instead to the air booster box. This unit is powered directly from the heater. Another duct leads from the booster box to the air distribution box, which is tucked under the tent sidewall at the corner. And attached to it are two 30-foot long perforated ducts, which will evenly distribute the heat. This system is specific for the Premier 170 and not available for the Premier 80. The Premier 350 can utilize a 100-foot perforated duct and does not require any other extra equipment to boost airflow. The 350s were used successfully at the Winter Olympic Games in Salt Lake in 2002. Jim, the unit diffuser will work great for my event, but how do I control the temperature? Well, Chris, there really is a very easy way to control the entire process, and it's the LB White remote mount thermostat. Let me show you. The LB White thermostat is a remote mount unit. It plugs directly into the heater and controls its operation. With a 25-foot cord, it can easily be installed where it needs to be inside the tent to monitor the temperature, starting up the heater when needed and shutting off the heater when the target temperature is reached. Jim and Chris make sure the thermostat is mounted away from the direct line of heat from the heater. It seems all set now, Jim. Are there any other things I should be aware of before I start heating? Well, you bet there are, Chris. We need to check a few other things before we turn up the thermostat. Jim explains that in transport, the heater may have tripped the high limit switch. Check and reset if necessary. Make sure that the heater is level and shim where necessary. He also tells Chris to make sure that all gas connections are tight and secure before starting gas flow from the tanks. Check all electrical connections for security and ensure the power is adequate to run the heater. If the heating system is too far from a power source, a gas-powered electrical generator may be used. Check all air passages in the heater burner, blower, and duct system to make sure they are clear of blockages. And finally, a barrier needs to be added around the heater itself before heating begins. Jim advises Chris to periodically check on the fuel supply during the event. A dew line will indicate the level of liquid propane in the tank. At 20% level, the tanks should be replaced with full tanks. If frost is found in the tank, gas vaporization and heat will be reduced. And with all systems ready to go, the thermostat is activated and set at 70 degrees. Within a few seconds of startup, the Premier 170 is delivering safe, clean, and quiet heat for another successful tent event. Thanks for watching from all of us at LB White.